Welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to be talking about what I call the ultimate doghouse door. So I'm in the process of building this little shed style doghouse that will eventually have a fence around this outer area here and a gate. And I wanted to construct the ultimate doghouse door that would allow me to open and close the door from within my house or remotely whenever I want. So the plan is that I can be in the house and with the press of a button, let the dog out of the house. So it actually wasn't as hard as you think. There are a few commercial options available. Uh, if you want to spend upwards of $500, uh, you can uh, buy doghouse doors that are electric that you can cut in but I'm kind of a DIYer, so I thought I could build something better myself, which is what I set out to do. All right, so like I said, still working on the doghouse itself, but the door is pretty much finished, except for some paint. So here's the setup. I have power running up above, and this wall, the ceiling will all be covered eventually. And then, what I started out with is this Progressive Dynamics Linear Actuator. It's model number PA15, and it's the 22 pound one, and it's considered a fast slimline actuator. My door is 24 inches tall by 24 inches wide. And this is just a piece of three quarter inch thick plywood that's been painted. And that was the basis for my door. I have this waterproof wall coating since it's going to be the inside of the dog area. This will be coated with that eventually and painted also. So how I started out is building it how you would build any manual dog door. I basically made a track out of wood. So you can see there's this inner area and it's just a three quarter, just slightly over three quarter inch board. And then I took some door weather strip you can see I put it in there I also put it on the front of the door and that's to keep it from binding and then there's an outer size board and these are just since the door is two feet this is a four foot board and a smaller four foot board this is a four foot board this is a four foot board so if you wanted you could just tie a string where the actuator is connected there to a pulley and if you had a cage which will eventually, there'll be a cage right here. You know, you can open and close the dog door with the rope on the pulley, which is similar to a setup that I had in the past. But I thought it'd be really neat to have an electronic setup. So like I said, I could open it from the back door of the house if I don't let the dog out. Uh, you know, if your dog, you can train it smart enough, you can have the dog go back in, then you can close the door. So here's my wiring setup. For the control box, I used this Gamma RF12 1PR and it's a weather resistant box. Not that it matters since it's inside. And it's really simple hookup. It's got 12 volt in for the power, plus and minus, and then two motor control leads that go out to your actuator. And it's just two wires, a positive and negative, and it reverses polarity when you switch it. The nice thing about this box is it has inputs for a manual switch. It's really simple. You see the green, the yellow, and the black wire there. You have a common wire, and then two feedback wires. And what I'm going to do is, I've connected that to this wire that runs down in the wall here, which I'll show you connected here in a minute. But it's really simple. I just use this momentary switch that you can buy anywhere. So this is where our common wire would go then your two outputs and it's just a momentary rocker switch so if I press and hold the button this way the door will go up I press and hold the button the door will go down that way from inside of here I always have my manual manually wired connection to open and close the door again along with my remote connection so it was real simple once I got the power applied I used a uh, 
10 amp power converter, which is up on the shelf there. It's really simple, you just hit the button. You can set this up to be either momentary or a continuously latching setup. Uh, the actuator has limit switches in it, so it will stop automatically when it reaches full travel. So I set it up so, so it's momentary, so you have to hold the button down. So you could open the door just a little bit if you wanted. And you just hold it down and it will stop automatically when it hits the limit switch. Same thing on the way down. It hits the limit switch. So a real simple setup, but it works pretty well. All right, so now I've got this box in, I've got our wire run. Strip it off and show you how we make the switch connection. All right, so the black wires are common wire, so that's going to go to this terminal here. So this is obviously meant for 120 volts AC, but it's just a switch, so it'll work for a low voltage application here. Obviously, we won't be using the ground terminal. So I don't really know which one is which. I would assume we said green is down. We'll assume that if we push that. That way it'd be down, so we're gonna try that. If not, we'll just reverse the switch. Okay, so if this up. Nope. So we'll reverse it. Easy enough. So just remember your orientation here. All right, so maybe you learned something, maybe you wanna try this for yourself. There's a, a lot of things you could do. Uh, if you're concerned about this coming down, possibly on your dog, if your dog isn't smart enough to get out of the way, that is a concern. You could put a infrared sensor that just cuts power if there's anything in its path. So there's a lot of different things that you could do. Um, that's why I went with a lower, it only has 22 pounds of force. Uh, compared to a lot of actuators, that's really nothing. That way, if the dog does get under there, it's, it'll probably jam the motor up and sh overload it before it can you know, hurt, do serious damage to the dog. But there are things that you can do, like I said, putting some uh, infrared eyes on, many different options. So I'll put links in the description below to all the parts that I used in uh, making this door, just in case you want to do something similar. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. Be sure to like the video. Until next time. We'll see you later.